Hey, how's everybody doing today? Okay. I know you're doing okay. I can just tell. Well, I'm doing okay. Uh, alrighty, so I didn't want to leave this video on this um, water cooled GPU without finishing up one little thing that I kind of found pretty important. I haven't done all the wiring yet. I was a little confused about something. I lost the manual. <laughs> well, I, I, I had the, the quick the quick manual and um, it didn't really have any explanation on how the card is, how the card works as far as you can see the I, I put the pump in up top not the pump the uh, radiator with the two fans the card goes in just like any other card so I didn't start with a a whole install on that. I really didn't think there was any need for that. Um, let's try to get a little more light in there. And um, that looks better. And I went on Google and I pretty much looked everywhere and it kind of, you know, a couple people came close, but they still didn't exactly answer it. All right. So on this part of the video, which isn't going to be too long, I just want to explain something your two fans, the radiator's got no power going to it, obviously. Your two fans have AIGB. Now, when you get these, you always put the arrows together on these. Everybody pretty much knows that, but the thing that you really gotta pay attention to is make sure You get them directly in they can very easily get bent all right so with the two fans on the radiator i was wondering where do i put these are they going to the board they can but then you just got more cable into doing stuff what it's meant to do is be you put the two you put the two together now if you want you can sync them up to your card, which a lot of people, I don't know why they would really want to do that because I would rather have my card synced up to all the rest of the fans. So I'm not going to bother doing that. There's also another 12 volt four pin fan connector in the back of this that you can use for, th for throttling your fan. Um, I'm not going to use that because again, it's going to be going on what the rest of the board goes on so it's not going to be a separate thing so long story short what you would need to do is find an AIGB pin or three pin on your motherboard well I have a four here but you can actually use a four pin extender if you have a three as long as you Line them up. See, there's three on the main thing, so it's only going to give five volts no matter what because it's going to a three pin on the board. So that's where the way it's going to go there. You're going to put those two. Again, this isn't even, I haven't finished cleaning everything up. So now your fan RGB is connected to your motherboard. But this was the big dilemma I was having. What powers the pump? Now I'm thinking CPU has its own pump power. So I'm thinking, does this card have its own pump power? But I couldn't find no directions. I was kind of guessing that the PCIe power was connected, daisy chained up on the inside and would connect the, the pump to the video card. So pretty much you're drawing off the video card for power. Makes sense, right? It is the easier thing. But I was a little concerned about it because you get one strange power cable that comes out of the GPU, other than the ones that go in here. And it's only, it's only four pin, two four pin male connectors. So I was like, what the heck? You can't plug the male in 
to a male on a board, it's just not going to work. So I ended up just winging it, and I said, geez, I don't want it to overheat, so I kind of really did keep an eye on it. I ended up figuring, and I, and I know this is basic, and you're probably saying, oh, geez, look, we really need to know that. Maybe you don't, but I wanted to make sure 100% that this is going to work. So basically, this goes to your pump. Now, your power, now this, from, from your GPU, it's powering this cable. You're going to take it, the fan is connected, the GPU fan, there's one single fan on this GPU, it's connected to the power on a GPU already, internally. So you're going to take your two fans and plug them in. I know this is kind of lame, but believe me, there's people out there, including myself, with all the water-cooled systems I built and everything. It's the first time I, I, I was kind of baffled on something like this. So, now the GPU is powering the fans up top. The pump is automatically powered through the GPU. The ARGB is powered off of the motherboard. Again, there's separate plugs on the back, pins on the back that you can use. Myself, like I said, I am, I'm not gonna use it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. After that, you just clean up your cables and make it look pretty. Make it look pretty. But I haven't seen too many ever doing, talking about these in builds, and I know you guys probably hear me talking about these all-in-one fans all the time. So let me, it might be a little wobbly because it is what it is. This one is made by Cooler Master. You can get a two or a three all in one fan. And what I love about these is if you don't want RGB, You don't plug in the RGB. You have a power, a four pin. These things are awesome for doing radiators. And then you have an RGB setup. Now, Cooler Master makes them. And they make some really nice ones. This is, this is the lower end one. They make another one that's pretty much similar to this, but the whole outer ring has a nice RGB strip all the way around it, but you're talking probably an additional 20 bucks, but it's, it's really nice looking if you like them. Okay, so you can get them by Cooler Master. You can get them by Asia Haas, who really gets crazy with the RGB on them. And you can get them through, I, ID Cooling has some as well. I don't know if up here has them. I think even up here makes, a a 240. Asia Haas makes a 240 and a 360. Cooler Master makes a 240, a 360. And as I was saying before, ID Cooling and up here, I think they only make 240s. I haven't seen the 360 millimeter. I, I kind of wish they would because I, I actually they're just as sturdy. These are really built well. They're just as sturdy as this. They're built just as good. But they're probably around $20 less. They have the same ball bearing type fans. You can see these. It's not bad. I've been using this for a little over a year and it still runs very smooth. Runs really nice. Um, I just couldn't use it now because it was up top in here. Now I've got the 240. I could have ran another radiator all the way down, but I wasn't going to disconnect those hoses and put another one. And plus the way I have my water cooling, it just makes it right around there. I would have had to readjust my fittings. But long story short, that's 
what I was kind of stumped with. It didn't. It didn't even say in the directions. EVGA could have very easily put in the directions or the manual. They could have put when powering the pump, or they could have put when the pump to power the pump, or the pump is powered automatically by the PCIe 4.0 or 3.0 from your motherboard and your three here, or two if you go with a smaller one that has water. But they don't, they don't even tell you. You pretty much just got to guesswork at it. The rest of these cables are all to power the fans. That's it. If I unplug this, all it's going to do is not spin those fans. It's still going to spin the pump. So yeah, I wanted to do a quick shot thing on that. I know it's already a little bit longer than it probably should be. But that's the, uh, that's the ditty, man. That's the ditty. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed these videos again. I'm planning on trying to make more content as things go on. I've been watching the video card prices drop dramatically, which is really a good thing. I'm getting actually more people asking for full builds than just video cards because, well, I, I, get, I get them pretty regularly. Um, Actually, I've got a 3070 sitting right over there that I was goofing around with earlier. And I got some 3060 Ti's, 3060's. But um, I got a lot of motherboards. I got a lot of I got a lot of stuff here because the companies when you bought from the distributor, they had you buy the gonads, and it was kind of wrong. I thought these are big these are big companies, big distributors, and what these people were doing is if I wanted to buy a dozen video cards, say whether it was four of 3060s, four 3070s, and one 3080, and three more 3090s to go with it. For every card I bought, I had to buy another item, whether it was a power supply, a motherboard, and they, they kind of had you there because it was getting to the point at first when you got the list, you could get anything you wanted off of it. They gave you like a list of probably 100 items. So if you didn't need motherboards, if you didn't need power supplies, you could grab something cheap like some uh, $20 mouse, um, a cheap keyboard. That way you could do your one for one, get the numbers together. But <laughs> it was pretty bad when it got to the point where they gave you one option. If you wanna buy five graphic cards, you have to buy this motherboard. You can't get the cards without one for one package deal. And you're already going in the hole when you've gotta pay, because the distributors jacked up their prices pretty much with the rest of the world. I mean, it was still less money than what you'd get on eBay or something, but they brought their prices up. And then on top of that, you had to spend another $200 on a board you don't even need. And if you got to buy 10 or 12 of them, now the only way to get rid of them is to put them all on eBay and hope you can break even on them. And it's not easy when you're on eBay and you're trying to break even on them when there's 200 other people on there that got the same package deals that are trying to sh sell off the same exact motherboard. So yeah, it got crazy and I'm kind of glad it's all clearing up. I'd rather just build. I'd rather upgrade than, than just sell products. Um, it's For me, it's more satisfying, but it's not easier. All right. So I'm going to clean up these cables, get this thing fired up, and in a, in a video down the road, I'll, I'll do some benchmarks. I did I ran benchmarks in the past. I'll pull that video, and I'll merge it with that 3080 Ti, and we'll see what the difference is going to be with this. I think it's probably about, don't get me wrong, I, I got this card because it's not that big of an improvement in gaming. But the water cooling on here allows you to overclock it a lot more than you could a regular one. And 
get, being a 3090, the big main reason I got it wasn't even because of the water cooling. It's because with video editing, you need that VRAM and the 12 on the TI or the 10 on the uh, regular 3080. I, I seen it struggling midway through some of my editing. So I, I wanted to make sure I could get that taken care of and I'm gonna find out today when I edit all this video up how it does. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, give me a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, you have anything to comment on, anything to ask a question about, if you need any help with anything that you're having a hard time finding, hit me up. I'll be glad. My, my email is in my YouTube. You, if you know how to look it up, it's right in there. It's not hard to find. Hit me up and I'll be glad to help. Or even private message me or, or openly message me on there and say, hey, I'd like to get a hold of you. So I'll tell you just how to do it. Anyways, Sunday, time to relax, chill, and do a lot of video editing. Everybody stay safe. Peace out.